If someone is listening and they think, well, like myself, I, I just wish I had a better education, you know, that wasn't all about succeeding in the next test and whatever. What are three books you would recommend somebody read? Maybe they're in their 40s or 50s and they think, oh, I've never really read any good books. And the ones I have picked up, I've wanted to like. I believe it was Chesterton who said the classics are those books that everybody wishes to say they've read, but nobody wants to read. I think it was Oscar Wilde. Oh, was it? Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Chesterton is the repository for all yes. quotes we cannot find a uh, yeah, source for. Right. Oh, no. You know, maybe that's Mark Twain, actually. Uh, it is Mark Twain. Okay. Yes. But in any case, three books. Let's, let's well, see. um... Mm, I guess you know I, I'm some I I I I tend towards fiction. Um, you know that's sort of yeah. my love, and that's, that's what that's I mean. That's what speaks that's, me. That's okay, what, yeah, because I mean, there are certainly fictional. books like sure. Tony Eslin uh, has so many good books yeah. about culture and education that are out of the ashes. Was a cr- have you sure. read that book? My uh, God. Only only a couple chapters. It was like a it. very coherent rant. <laughs> <laughs> in the best possible way. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he's like that, and yeah. it's powerful. It's very powerful. Yeah, he's he's a marvelous writer. Mm. Well, uh, you know, I guess three sort of books that should that that that, that have the power to change your life and change the way you, you look at your life, the way you look at the world, and that are hard to read in a certain respect. As in, if you don't have the discipline of reading. These are good books to struggle with good. and to get that discipline, to work your way through them and not let them conquer you in a certain sense. Well, th- let them conquer you in the best <laughs> sense. Um, let's see. Well, I'll say this uh, again. And I won't hold you to them, and you may change your mind tomorrow, so oh, no sure. pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, this is, might be one of those things like, what's your favorite author? It's like, yeah. well, I don't know. It depends on my mood, the time of year, yeah. uh, my age. Um, but let's see. Three books that I would say are, you know, well, I'll say this again, uh, as I, we started with the conversation, The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle. I think everybody should read that book. And um, if, if you have some difficulty perhaps reading that book just on your own, uh, you know, read it to your kids. Read it to your kids. Read it out loud. It is one of the best books to read aloud to your children. Um, and you, and the, the merriment in it, the optimism in it, the romance of it is towering, and you and you you'll know that you are free of that 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 poison of cynicism if you can read that and just enjoy it and mm. just delight. It's a book that it's there to to delight in, and it's a good exercise in that sense. Um, the second book I'll say is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Man, it's just that's just um, a, a story that is told by a master. Um, it's a it's a wonderful story told by a master storyteller, and you feel it. You just are you, that book is just like a symphony of beauty and and mm. emotion. David okay, Copperfield. I've never read it. It no, now it's now. Been, and now the 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 tip for that one. You know, if the tip for Robin Hood is read it to your kids. You can read David Copperfield to your kids, too. Actually, I'm in the midst of it right now with my sons, and maybe that's why it comes to my mind right now. But um, the trick for any Dickens book, because every Dickens book is daunting and it's a commitment because it's that big, and, but you have, to, you have to get into it. Mm. You'll find that spot. You'll always know it when you get there, mm. where maybe it's 100 pages, maybe it's 200 pages, but just like you're not going to feel any real commitment to a man that you chat with in line at the store oh, you have to great analogy you have to sit with him for a while as i'm doing with you <laughs> <laughs> and um get to know him before you feel connection or concern for that person and a dickens book is like that it just it introduces you to characters and says well it's going to take a little while to get to know this person before you start caring for them. And, and I'm going to give you that experience over the course of hundreds of pages, which is maybe a slog. It's a, it's a challenge to get through. It takes time and commitment. But, but by the time things start happening, you really feel for these characters in a way that you're not going to feel for a character in a page turner. Um, so the last one, um, 
the last I'll, I've got the last one I'm going to include as a whole thing, but it's really sixty things, um, and that is the stories of Sherlock Holmes. Hmm. Sherlock Holmes needs to come back. There now I say sixty things. There are only sixty Sherlock Holmes stories that Con Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote. Um, there are thousands that everyone else has written, but the the canon of Sherlock Holmes that that is that's just all about again the 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 gorgeous pleasure of reading because it just sucks you into that world with the with the the hearth the the the, the shadows the cabs the, the women with the the black lace veils coming in with problems and Sherlock Holmes is great I uh, and I, I I say do all 60 and if you really want to have a great experience you can do what I did which was I I said to myself, like at some point I looked at myself and said, I haven't read all the Sherlock Holmes stories. And I was kind of ashamed of myself. And I said, I am going to devote a whole year of my life where I only read Sherlock Holmes. And I did. I read all the stories and I read gracious. all the essays. And, and Sherlock Holmes is the only fictional character that has multiple biographies written about him. He's a tr like that are that are scholarly. He's a very mysterious character because he, he never existed. He's the most famous man that never existed. Huh. But there's more arguably more written about Holmes than Hamlet. Why? Who is this guy? He's a mystery in and of himself. Hmm. And so I really threw myself into Sherlock Holmes and read the, the writings of the writings by great authors like Ronald Knox and G.K. Chesterton. And like, there's so much that people have said about this character and about this body of work that is fascinating to enter into to Did, get into you, that you said world. you took the course of a year to read all 60 you told well you? i read all 60 and then i read i read around the around them, i read yeah. the biographies Gee, i read the commitment. essays i read the pastiches mm. uh you know i read in some essay it's like well you're you you haven't entered into the world of sherlock until you've written your own sherlock Holmes story so mm. i wrote six or seven of my own sherlock Holmes stories and just like gave myself to that world for a while and it was great If you like that clip, be sure to like and subscribe. Cheers.